Welcome to the GHS Auth Complete Training Video. During this training video, we'll show you how to create a complete GHS record and explore all the features of GHS Auth, including printing GHS labels, safety data sheets, translation, using the GHS library, and more. To create a new GHS record, click the New button. After selecting the New button, the GHS Info Update form will be launched. Fill out the following fields. GHS code, this is the code for your chemical. Language and revision. I'm gonna stick with English for now and this is my first revision of this info record. If this is the first revision for that chemical, the system will ask you whether or not you want to create that chemical. The next step is to fill in a description. This is a description of your chemical. Next, we're going to enter all the information required for each section and subsection. You'll see that there is one tab for each of the 16 sections required as per the GHS Purple Book. You should refer to the guidance on the preparation of safety data sheets for further information on the details of what's required for each section. To fill out a section, browse to the section and subsection required and fill in the details here. For another example, I might go to the first aid measures section and fill in the details for section 4.1, description of necessary first aid measures. Each subsection allows the specification of rich text. And what that means is you can pri provide bold, different font sizes, insert images and tables, and basically accomplish any kind of formatting you want. You can put hot links to websites. If you like, you can copy and paste text from Microsoft Word or some other rich text processor. Most of the GHS sections and subsections are fairly straightforward, like the description of necessary for first aid measures, which I just showed you. However, there is some special functionality for certain sections. For example, if I go to section two, hazard identification, and section 2.2, GHS label elements, I will see several sections that have special functionality. So for example, I'm going to pick a signal word. I'm either going to leave it blank or pick danger or warning. Next, I'm going to select GHS hazard codes. To do this, I'm going to select from the list of predefined hazard codes. These are specified in the regulations. I'm going to pick hazard code number H315, causes skin irritation. If I know the codes, I can just type them in. Next, I'm going to select my list of GHS precautionary codes. Again, I can do so by picking from the list. I'm going to select precautionary code P261. Again, I can select by just typing in the code if I happen to know it. Some precautionary codes include variables or fill in the blank statements. So for example, P264 says wash blank thoroughly after handling. In that situation, I'm going to come in here and replace the dot 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 with whatever is necessary. For section 2.2, I'm also going to select some placards. I select these over here on the right hand side by clicking the selected flag where appropriate. At any point in this process, I can come up here and hit the save button to save my progress. Another section that has special functionality is section three, composition of ingredients. Here, I'm going to create a list of cast numbers and chemicals that compose my product. GHS Auth includes a short predefined list of chemical compounds. 
I can search this list by typing up here and then selecting the appropriate chemical. I can also type in a CAS number if I know it. If I require a CAS number that's not on the predefined list, I can right click the empty CAS number field and select Chemical Compound Update. From here, I can click the new button and I can enter a CAS number. I can then fill in a description. I'll now find this in my searchable list of chemicals. I can also enter a chemical without a cast number by simply typing in the description. For each chemical, I can list a minimum and maximum, as well as a note. When you're ready to generate a printable safety data sheet, click here. If this is the first time, you'll be asked whether you wish to attach a logo. Here's my first safety data sheet. As you can see, each of the 16 sections is filled out. At the bottom of each page, you'll see three fields. Date of preparation, which is currently blank, draft, and revision number. We'll come back to this later, but they have to deal with publishing and revising your GHS records. Once you've generated this document, you can print, export your document, and save it to a PDF or other file format, or email it. If I click the send via email button, it will launch Microsoft Outlook and attach my safety data sheet as a PDF document. Next, I may want to produce a safety label. Click here to do so. You can select a number of copies, a quantity, and a unit of measure. For the unit of measure, you can pick from the drop-down list or if you know the unit you want, you can just type it in. Then you can select preview or print. This is my safety label for this chemical. As you can see, it shows the signal word, the quantity, the chemical contents, hazard statements, precautionary statements, pictograms, chemical name, company address, and emergency phone number. For more complete information on the mapping between the GHS data entered and the safety data sheet and safety label, please refer to the GHS Auth user guide. Apart from section two and three, the rest of the sections are pretty cut and dry. You go to the section, you go to the subsection, and you fill in the details. However, there are some tools that GHS Auth provides to make this process easy. For one example, I'm going to go to Section 9, Physical and Chemical Properties. And I see there is a button at the top of the section, Copy from GHS. If I press this button, for this section and subsection, it will give me a list of other published GHS records where this section was filled out. I see that I have one other record 
that I've published where I fill it in this section. And if I want to, I can double click to say, I want to copy it from there. To see another useful feature, let's go to section 7, Handling and Storage, subsection 1, 7.1 Precautions for Safe Handling. If I hit Copy from Library, it lists any predefined library entries for this section. Let's take a look at how to add a statement to the library. We go to Toxicological Information, and we see that I've already filled out section 11.1. .1. I can hit Upload to Library. I can give my library entry a name, such as Toxicological Effects Variant A. Now the next time I author a GHS record, I'll be able to easily select this statement from the library. Another useful tool when authoring GHS records is the clone function. It's useful when you want to create a nearly identical GHS record. First, bring up the chemical that your new chemical is similar to. Then, hit the clone button. From here, I can come up with a new GHS code, such as chemical 5. Now, I start authoring chemical 5 as an exact copy of chemical 1, and all I need to do is change the parts that need changing. Of course, I'll want to review each of the 16 sections and each of its subsections to determine whether they require revision or not. Here I see that my first aid measures have been copied exactly from my original GHS info record. Now let's talk about the concept of revision control and publishing a GHS record. If I hit the publish button, my GHS record is now locked and is no longer editable. I cannot come in here and modify any of the sections or subsections in any way. The purpose of this is to say, at this moment in time, my record is published and I'm going to use it to print and show to my customers. From this point forward, I can still revise my safety data sheet for this chemical, but I have to do so by creating a new revision. And I will have the old revision and its date of publish on record from that point forward. Let's take a quick look at the safety data sheet based on this published record. Now I'll see at the bottom of each page, I have a date of preparation and a revision number. However, the word draft, which I saw before I had published, has been removed. Now that my GHS record is published, if I wish to revise it, I'll have to create a new revision. To do so, I'm going to hit the clone button. This will create an exact copy. I'm going to leave the GHS code and the language as they are, and I'm going to see that the system has automatically assigned a new revision number of 2. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to hit Save. Now I have revision 2 of my GHS record, and I can edit it as I see fit. When I'm done, I'll publish my new revision. This is a good point at which to talk about how to review and look at existing GHS records. If I hit the Find button, which is the binoculars here at the top of the form, it will bring up a list of all my existing GHS records. I see here that I have a GHS record for Chemical 1, two GHS records for Chemical 5, and a GHS record for MK121. I see that I have two different revisions for Chemical 1, Revision 1 and Revision 2. The first revision is published the second revision is not. A published revision also has a published date. If I want to review and look at any of these, I can double click it. GHS Auth makes translating your GHS data and producing translated safety data sheets easy. There are a number of steps involved. First, let's go to the Firefighting Measures tab. Let's pick section 5.3, Special Protective Actions for Firefighters. Let's create a library entry for this item. We'll call it Protective Firefighters A. Now, we'll close this off 
and we'll launch the translate function. This is a function that you can use to define translations for each of your library entries. I can bring up 5.3 and I can see that I have a single entry in the library for English. Now I can enter a new row here and select French. I can come across and fill in the French language version. Now I've configured a translation for this library entry. What will happen now is, if I take a copy of my safety data sheet, and I say it's going to be a French copy, it will automatically translate all entries that are library entries with French language translations. In addition, the system comes pre-programmed with translations for the hazard codes and precautionary codes. Let's give it a try. We're going to click Clone. We're going to select French. And we see here that it is going to create our first French revision. I'm going to get an error message in this case. This error message complains about the variable in precautionary code P264. GHS Auth has noticed that We've translated P264, but since there was a variable in it, which was filled in in English, we need to replace it in French. Let's go to section 2.2, and we're going to refill in this variable. Of course, I don't speak French, so I'm going to fill in a random word. In addition, this section below will list any other sections that couldn't be translated. These are sections where there was no library entry or there was a library entry but no French. So we see for example that section 4.2 has not been translated. We can go to section 4.2, see the blank space, and fill in the French here. I'm not going to bother filling in the rest. When you save your record, it will warn you that you have untranslated sections and confirm that you still want to save. As a demonstration, I'm going to generate a draft version of the safety data sheet. And I will see that all the headings have been translated to French, as well as all the translated sections. Once you've built up a good library of standard phrases, it becomes more and more easy to translate a safety data sheet. Thank you for joining us for the GHS Auth training video. If you haven't already, please go to ghsauth.com to download the free version of the software. If you'd like to learn more, you can read our complete user guide at the link shown.